Hello, 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 everybody. Hi, how are you today? Welcome to the Kathy J Show. I hope you're having a good day so far. It's really good to see you. Thank you for joining us this half hour. Remember, you can always find me at my YouTube channel, Kathy J. If you just go there, click like and subscribe. I would love you so much. Be so happy for it. Also, all of you connecting with us on social media, keep those conversations going. Keep sharing our posts. I truly, truly love you for it. Thank you. Okay, so today, everybody. Oh, and you can always go to kathyjshow.com to just find any of the old, sh any shows that you might have missed. Today's show, you're going to want to share with everybody because we're restoring hope today. Today, we're going to dispel all the myths about hope, replace them with the truths instead. So for anybody out there that's feeling the struggles of life, today we're going to share this new book with you that reveals where you can find hope again. Especially all of you battling anxiety and depression right now, this is a very uncertain world, so let's get right into it. The woman behind this book is kind of sort of a hope whisperer. She's lived it, she's here to tell them and talk about it. Everybody, this is Katherine Hammond. Yay! Yay! Thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. Okay, so so the book Hopeless, uh, we've all been reading it and I mean it's it's a really good book of giving mm. hope, but you didn't get to this book without living the life you've lived. There's a lot of sadness and a lot of trauma and you share mm -hmm. it in this book. Why was it so important for you to be so raw, so honest? I think the most important need that we have as human beings is to be seen, yeah. to be witnessed. Yeah. And everybody goes through hard things. It's not just me. I've been through a lot of hard things. but. I wanted other people to feel seen when they read my book. I want them to be able to relate to me because my life today is, um, you know, has become privileged uh -huh. in some ways, and it's not where I started. Right, not so, at all. Yeah, You're right. Um, you, you've. Um We'll get into your story, but there there was a lot that you had to deal with as a child that right. a lot of children wouldn't have survived. Yeah. So, um, uh, so in in our society, when we talk about hope, there's a lot of lies of how we are taught how what hope is and how we roll with hope. Explain that. Yeah. So, it, uh, I compare it to the flat earth theory. Remember, you know, back in the day, centuries before we were born, of course, yeah. uh, people believed that the earth was flat. Right. And they just taught their children. It was taught in schools. You just and keep we, going. Right. Keep we, going. We just assumed <laughs> right. that the earth was flat because it's what everybody said. And we have picked up some lies about hope the very same way. Okay, like explain it a little yes. more. Yes. So one of the lies that we've been taught is that hope is a commodity. It's mm -hmm. something you either have or you don't have. Right, like I hope it works out for you. Right, right. right. And, and if we get cancer, for example, then, or especially incurable cancer, then we've lost hope. We've run out of hope. We don't have the it anymore. The doctor said there's no hope. Right. Hope is gone. Exactly. Right, right. Okay. So, um, you're, you're right. We do use that word like that. Right. Like I'm hopeless or, you know, like, yep. yes, right. And uh, top secret, like there is no such thing as hopeless. There, There's no such thing as hopeless. So we've been taught that it's a commodity. We have been taught that it is an exclusive club. Yeah, that right. Only the lucky people, the ones who have like the great family, uh -huh. the great spouse. They the, got hope. Right. right the right. money in the bank account, all those things. Uh, not true. Hope right. is for everybody, no matter what your situation is. But it's how you transform how you hear the word and see the word and use the word, correct? That has transformed my life. And that's what we're going to, yes, right. And now she's going to tell us the secret, everybody, mm -hmm. when we come back. <laughs> Kathy J. Oakwood Homes is an official partner of the Kathy J Show. Oakwood Homes, building happiness. Kathy J. Welcome back to the Kathy J Show, everybody. Catherine Hammond is with us today. Yay! She is the author right here of this powerful book called Hopeless. Now, Catherine, you, 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 you weren't born feeling hopeful. Like your childhood had no hope in it. I mean, and you're honest about it in the book. Right. And, and it's built who you are today. So it started with your, your mom, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Your mom wasn't the healthiest mentally, correct? She was not. She was clinically depressed, hospitalized for depression a couple of times and uh, made suicidal threats on more than one occasion, which... To her children, to, to you her, guys. Yes, yeah. yes. Right, and you so, have two siblings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that must have been very hard, having your mom 
do that, say that thing to you. Like she would say, I'm going to kill myself and leave the house for right. hours. I'm going to kill myself because I just can't take you kids anymore. Yeah, that's horrible so. guilt. So you started feeling this, it's my fault thing. It's my fault was a theme for me. And I carried, like it kept ringing in my brain for many years in all kinds of different situations. And I never realized that it was there, but I started picking up in life, you know, I didn't feel hopeless in my, or hopeful in my childhood. And I carried that through so much of my life, well into my 40s, and I always thought it was my fault that I wasn't doing good enough, that I wasn't a good enough person. Right. Well, you had that message given to you. There was a, you were, you were assaulted when you were a child by mm -hmm. someone in your family. And you say in the book, uh, you tried to tell someone and they acted like it was your fault. So you were like, great, I guess it's my fault again. And then your right. first husband, um, you know, I guess it's my fault that, you know, we had kids and here I am, you know, it, it oh, that message always came to you. So hope was the last thing you were feeling or knew how to feel. Right? Absolutely. And I was very good at reframing things like mentally using my mind. Uh -huh. I could reframe things to find the beauty, but I didn't have a connection to hope in a way that would help me hold both the joy and the sorrow, all the things. And that's where you come in where you say hope, a lot of us think it's our mindset. It's your, you said it's your body has to feel the hope. Mm -hmm. Explain that a little more. I think hope, it was planted in our bodies by our maker. Okay, and so, it's like our purpose. It's like the, the spirit of us. Exactly, okay. this, the center of who we are. And so we try all of this positivity and optimism and all of those things, and we think that that's how we find hope, but we cannot think our way to hope. Yeah. It's an embodied experience for me. It's, you know, if you, for people who meditate, when you close your eyes and you're quiet, that place, yeah. that's where hope lives. Okay. I love that. That, I love that. Do you mm. remember the first time you actually felt hope? Do you remember a certain situation where you went, wow, what is this? <laughs> what is this joy that I'm feeling all of a sudden? Do you remember any of those moments? I, I remember when I started doing contemplative prayer many years ago. Wow. And so instead of talking to God, I would be with God and just listen. That's the first time that I really had a body experience of it. So, and so, cause growing up, your life wasn't that good and, and your siblings, they didn't really make it out as well as you did. They still have some issues to this day from the upbringing that you guys had. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're not living life quite the same way that I am. And I don't think, I think I found a level of happiness and hope that I, I'm still holding out for, for them. You know, and I agree. And that's what I want. I, I want, because I want us to teach our kids to be able to find hope. Mm -hmm. Is this something within you? You know, but, but it's hard to say this is the, this is hope. Is hope faith? No. It, no. No. Faith happens with our minds, right? It's a belief in something. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Okay. But hope, hope is. Hope is a wellspring that's right here that we just tap into. And it's the easiest answer if you can just tap into it mm -hmm. and get out of here. Exactly. <laughs> get out of here. Good, good right. luck with that, right? <laughs> but you know what? It's a mindset that you need to transform. And if you right. put the work in, then it right. makes your life better. And you can be like Catherine here, who you'd never know what she's been through as a child. So. But I still feel all the ups and downs. Right. Yes. Okay, but you, when you're centered with the hope. Is that yes. it? Yes. All right, all right. Yes. All right. So when we come back, everybody, Catherine's fiance is going to be joining us and you're really gonna find out how hope gets put to the test. We'll be back. Kathy J. Ramos Law is an official partner of the Kathy J Show. He's a medical doctor and a lawyer. Ramos Law, what makes us different makes us better. Kathy J. Welcome back to the Kathy J Show, everybody. Yay, we have Brian on the couch. So everybody, going through life's ups and downs, pain and trauma, Catherine Hammond here has been continuing to fight and find hope in her life, regardless of what comes her way. And everybody, this is her amazing fiance, Brian. Yay. Good to have you here, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> so tell me, where, where did you two meet? Uh, Brian? We met online. Have... I was doing some work in Colorado Springs. Really? Uh -huh. And then, but, it, but it, you're not really supposed to fall in love with people you meet online. Right? <laughs> but, but Brian, so when you guys met though, did you know right away that you, it was a good match? I did. Yeah? I made any excuse I could to 
hang out with her I love as that. much as I could. I love that. And so then how long, ha and so, okay, so you, you, how long before she started unpacking her baggage and you started seeing what she had? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that long. We had an incident with one of her dogs, a husky that she had that since passed away. It uh -huh. really challenged us both. Okay, and so you were like, we can make it through this. We can make it through anything. Absolutely. It was intense. You're right. Right. Uh, the first week that we met. A re oh, something with your dog. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then uh, you guys are dating. You've been together how many years now? Six years. Six years. Excellent. Okay. And tell me. Yeah. Oh, is that your engagement photo? <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful dress. Did you know he was going to ask you? You were wondering why all those people with cameras were out there? Um, <laughs> yeah, the this was not the engagement itself. This was pre, this was just promised to oh, each other. Yes. I love so. that. I love that. So let's talk about being promised mm -hmm. to each other. So um, you're finding hope every day because Brian, tell everybody what you're, what's going on with you right now. Well, I have incurable cancer tumors in my abdomen that will most likely come back. They've okay. already been back. They've already, I've already had them twice. Okay. And when you were going through chemo, you, you t were writing this book. I was. I started writing this book uh, during the pandemic, and it was probably nine months after the first time that his cancer came up. So he had this huge tumor that burst in his intestine, almost killed him. That must have been painful. And you're right, you're right. That must have been bad, okay. Understatement. Uh huh. And uh, so I was writing the book with that kind of in the background and the pandemic going on. And then we got the call that the cancer was back. And we knew as soon as we got that call that, you know, as far as the situation goes, as far as the normal definition of hope goes, yeah. there was no cure for this. So that means There's no, no way hope. to fix it. If you think about hope the way that we have been taught, right. but hope actually doesn't have anything to do with our circumstances. The truth is, hope is always here, it's ever present. So it might, I mean, like with the sun, it might be cloudy, it might be foggy. You might not see it or feel it, but that doesn't mean that it's not here. Right, that's right. Now, now Brian, it's easier said than done, right? I mean, do you, are you, is it okay? Can do you wake up every day and say, I got hope? I forget, but that's one of the things I love <laughs> about this book, uh, Catherine's book, Hopeless. It reminds me to live bravely, beautifully every day, even when I might forget. Right, because it's either, you know, you get to live in or you get to die in, right? <laughs> when, isn't that what they say? How do you want to handle the life, right? And so do you, do you think about the fact that you have terminal cancer? Do you think about that or is every day... I, or, or is every day a yes, I think about it, but that's why I do so much every day. Like how? It comes and goes in waves. Some days it'll punch you in the stomach, uh -huh. pun intended. Some days I forget and I get busy with the, just the day to day of life. Right. You know, you guys are definitely focusing on getting married. Yay, we are. on June 11th. In just a few weeks. Right, yep. this is pretty awesome. So, what, what made this decision that you were getting married? We're doing this. So, we had been. You know, promised for years and then two days after we found out that the cancer came back we had always planned to get married someday yeah, right two days after the cancer came back he had one of our granddaughters propose to me oh so. I love that that's awesome. that's awesome so you had to say yes of course <laughs> right the pressure is on but if hope so is hope about thinking about the future or is hope mm -hmm. about just living in the present hope for me is very much about the present that's one of the lies that I talk about in the book hope is about even if you even if it was in some way related to the future I hope that this will happen right that's only about making us feel good right now exactly right? like I, I hope everything works out right right, right. so oh my gosh is that you guys have skiing it is what park where are you at that was, that was Durango. Oh, I went to college in Fort Lewis. Oh. I went to college in Durango. I skied at Purgatory. He tried to kill me that day on <laughs> cross country skis. So. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's love. Uh, were you guys cooking classes or are you guys actual yes, chefs? That was cooking class. I here love in Denver. This. So you're so you're living life. So 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 Brian, tell me tell me what you tell me what's going through your head every day. I mean, obviously you have this beautiful woman here, you're getting married, you <laughs> saved yourself for marriage. No, I mean, I'm kidding, I meant this is his first marriage. Uh, you know, I mean, tell me about what you think about life, what you want the rest of us to know. Well, uh, I've been given a certain amount of information about my potential demise. Uh, there's no particular timeline, but I know 
what's probably going to get me. Right. Uh, and in some ways, that's different than new compared to other people. Okay. But in other ways, it's not. Uh, we're all going to go. Right. What's probably going to get me is something in a 7-Eleven because <laughs> I go too much. <laughs> but you're right. Something's going to get all of us. Mm -hmm. But we don't, a lot of us, we don't know when we're going to go. You, you know it's upon you. And so I want to know if you live differently. Do you think differently? What do you do differently? That knowledge has made things more intense and beautiful and uh, yeah. put a little more pressure to take advantage of the time that I have. For sure, for sure, right. Okay, all right. Bittersweet is a word that he has used multiple times. There, there's bitter and there's sweet all at the same time. And the, the truth about real hope is it's big enough to hold the bitter and the sweet, the joy that. and the sorrow. I love that. All right, all right, thank you. So when we come back, everybody, um, we're going to learn how to tap into that hope just a little more with Catherine and Brian. We'll be back. Kathy J. The Colorado Lottery is an official partner of the Kathy J Show. Colorado Lottery, play on. Kathy J. Welcome back to the Kathy J Show, everybody. Thank you so much for spending this half hour with us. This is Catherine and this is Brian, everybody. They're hanging out with us. Catherine wrote this awesome book. It's called Hopeless. And it's a way just to remind all of us that we need to just transform our mindset so that it can transform our life and our body, right? So, so Brian, you just let us know that you have terminal cancer um, and that you, it's about living your life every day um, because what we were talking about in the commercial break is I could die before you, even though you, you, you know when you're dying, your demise is. I could still die before you. So the message is every day is our gift, right? Exactly. Let's talk yes. about that a little more. Is that's how you wake up and say, today's my gift. Because we always think about the future. I'm going on a vacation in four months. I'm doing this next year. We never think about living today, mm -hmm. right? That's right, and I'm not perfect at it. I wake up and run into all of the thousands of details that you have to take care of and right. getting things done and going to work. Uh, but with my diagnosis, I get to remind myself more often yeah, that but today is the day to <laughs> take advantage of. Today is the day to enjoy, no matter what whether things are coming up that I like or things that are coming up that I might not like. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of us in life have things that we don't like that is happening to us. And it, it's like a wave after a wave after a wave. We've all been there. You felt it a lot, Catherine. You were a child and didn't have anyone to help you. So what kind of hope mm. do you have for everybody out there? Mm. Give them some hope Yeah. or don't hope. So w w my way of giving people hope is reminding you that you already have hope. It's not out there somewhere in your circumstances. It's not our magical miracle waiting for it, us Absolutely. To, for it to come to us. And that's why I called the book Hopeless. Exactly. Because as long as we think that things need to be different in our lives in order to have hope, we're still going to feel miserable and sometimes fall down into despair. Right. But hope is not dependent on our circumstances. We don't have to have a cure for Brian's cancer. Hope is big enough to hold all of it. Okay, so when we put in there, oh, I hope I get that job, I hope I get that boyfriend, I hope I get that, you know, I hope I win the lottery, that's not, we're using hope wrong. Uh, I'm okay with using it as a wish, okay. as long as I recognize, but when we talk about being hopeless, we all know that being hopeless doesn't mean that you don't have a wish. Right. Hopeless means the floor is falling out, and there is no such thing as hopeless. It simply doesn't exist. Hope is always here. It's an ever-present wellspring that we can tap into. And so that's why I put the personal hope toolkit in the book so that people can play with some different things and find ways to tap back into hope when things look cloudy. For yeah, you. Tap, back, tap back in. I'm going to find that next time I do mm -hmm. some sort of meditation. I'm going to try to feel mm -hmm. that that hope in there. Mm -hmm. Do you meditate, Brian? I do. You do? Mm -hmm. Do you do you meditate? You, ob you obviously do. do. Okay. Mm -hmm. What other things do you do that th that? What are some of the mm -hmm. tips that you have mm -hmm. in here that people can start doing? Feeling your feelings. Okay. Like most of us are are trying to push down our feelings, yeah. the bad ones. Because we don't have time. time. I don't have right. time to be to grieve. I don't have time right. to be angry about this A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. Right. Movement is a big one for me. Being outdoors okay. is big for me. Okay. Creating, whether it's writing or painting or cooking or creating and helps that, me reconnect with hope. And that's all in your hope toolkit. It is. Okay. And there's one, there's a tool in there for how to have the best day of your life anytime you want. Uh, what do you two love to do together? What's your best time together? 
Uh, we love hiking. Yeah. We're a bit foodies, so we love mm -hmm. to eat. That's good. It requires some cooking. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, right, yes. right, right, right. Now, are yeah. there any final thoughts, Catherine, that you want to share mm. with our viewers about mm. hopeless and, and being hopeless? Yeah. Yeah. The, the thing that I would say is that even if it feels cloudy, when it feels cloudy, it can feel cloudy even when things aren't that bad. When it feels cloudy, it doesn't mean that hope has run out. Hope can't run out. It's always here. We just have to learn to tap back into it and sometimes be patient. Yes. And know that the sun will come out again. And what a good lesson for our kids, too. Mm. So, Brian, so I can't important. thank you enough for being here on the couch. Mm. Thank you so much, Catherine. Everyone out there, have a good day and find your hope. Thank you so much.